This project's a staircase that's on the third floor of an existing building in central London. When I first got given this project, it was a relatively straightforward steel support structure and then clad in stone with a bit of reinforced stone as well, doing some of the work. Um, I then took this project on and started working through it. And as I was going, I realised that actually this stair didn't really need any support structure to it. Really, it should just be the stone working on its own. If it was a single lump of stone, then it would be able to balance and sit exactly where we wanted it to. If you have a, if you have a structure that's clad in stone, you end up having to have quite a bit of build-up to get all the fixings and the steelwork inside it. So by making it just pure stone, we could cut out a lot of that and make sure that we got it down to the smallest structural form we possibly could, making it more of an aesthetic and elegant structure. This then developed into working out exactly how the arch was going to work. And we did quite a lot of work um, looking at the joint patterns of the arch to make sure we had enough bearing surfaces to make sure the arch could actually work structurally rather than just aesthetically. Um, one of the other big issues we need to do come for the stair was that it's on the third floor of a, an existing concrete structure. And all of the slabs were designed quite closely to the loadings which means that we couldn't put a nine-tonne staircase in the middle of a slab because it just couldn't take the additional load. We did, however, realise that the support structure around could take the extra load. Um, this meant that we had to design a steel grillage structure to span all the way across and support the stair in the middle of it. This grillage had to span four metres and support nine tonnes. Uh, this isn't too serious in structural engineering terms until you realise that it has to be it had to be completely within the finishes zone, which was about 70 millimetres, which means we had to span four metres and support nine tonnes um, with only 70 millimetres of structural zone. This is a span to depth ratio of 55, which is actually a lot higher than you'd normally try and go for for a structural solution. So in order to make our steel grillage work, we had to pre-camber it, which means we curved it upward slightly by 20 millimetres. So then when the stair was on in the final position, it would push it all down and make it completely flat. Uh, this is a fine structural solution and you use it quite a lot for large spans and small depths. But as we were building the stair, all the load wasn't going straight on all in one, load, one go. So each block was going on in turn and each of the, and the total load was being built up in stages. The problem with this is that if you put, keep on adding more and more stones to it, and the grillage moves down by 20 mil, it starts to change, it starts to change how the stair is sitting. And so you end up putting a lot of additional stresses into the stair and it starts pushing and pulling the stone in ways that you didn't really want to happen and we couldn't really allow for. So in order to avoid this, we had to push the grillage down flat before we built the stair. So we had to jack it, which, which also acted as a load test on site. We had to jack it down flat and then hold it down with a series of beams. These beams then stayed in while the stair was being built, meaning that as the stair was loading the grillage, it was unloading the steel beams. And then at the end, when all the stair was put in and the entire nine tons was sitting on the grillage, we could just lift off the beams because there'd be no load in them anymore. So a lot of the methods we had to use on this stair are quite unusual for structural engineers to use. They're all quite traditional methods, so load line analysis and the thrust line going through the stone. Um, this isn't normally something that you use that often in everyday practices, so it was really intriguing to learn about all of these old methods and combine them with the new finite element methods as well to come up with a structural solution that we know works. When I look at this staircase, I feel really proud of it because not only is it a beautiful and elegant structure that's completely made out of stone and so we could cut down, we could cut down the form of it as much as possible, but there's so much hidden design and work and collaboration that's gone into it in order to actually make its structure and put it where it is. So not only is it just a beautiful sculpture in the middle of a room, actually there's all the steel grillage underneath it, there's all the support that needed to go in, there's all the different parties that had to go together and actually make it what it, what it is now. Structural engineering to me means problem solving. It's in the real world though, which means you get to work with your clients, your architects, the designers, and really find out what their issues are and what problems they have and then solve them in a creative way.